Are you tired of watching professional athletes hawking athletic wear in TV commercials? Have you ever asked yourself, where do they get off earning all those big bucks while making me look pretty crummy in comparison? Well then you, my friend, are this campaign's target audience. Boom! Just like that, I earned my black belt and dad jokes. See, Target has a new line of athletic wear out there, but much like yourself, I've grown sick of watching professional athletes get filthy rich off those lucrative apparel endorsements. So instead, they gotta launch a campaign that involves regular average Joes engaging in some kind of activity while wearing their new athletic line. Today we'll be working on the first of three spots which features a community yoga class. Let's get started. Now, I wasn't really given much for this job. Normally, I'd get some casting specs, location photos, director treatment, but because they're going to be casting non-actors and using more of a documentary style of shooting, I didn't get any of that. Instead, the only materials I received were this very loose outline that you're looking at now, and a director's shot list, which we'll go over as I draw. Okay, so the first three frames I'm gonna draw here are all describing one shot. We're gonna start out really tight on a female yoga instructor's face, and then we're gonna pull back at a three-quarter angle to reveal that she's teaching a community yoga class. The director wants everyone to be holding a tree pose. And because I've never done yoga before and have no idea what a tree pose is, I went online and found this nifty little photo reference. Keeping things pretty loosey-goosey at this stage, largely because I didn't really get any concrete direction for these spots. I'm making a lot of this up as I go along, so I'd really rather get approval on these angles and compositions before I bother going into detail. As usual, I'm sketching with my fine tip marker here in Painter 2020. This is my standard go-to marker. I use it for everything. Later, I'll be using my chisel marker to add shadow and form to these sketches. Those two markers, the fine tip and the chisel, are used for about 85% of all my drawing. Okay, so that's our first shot told in three frames. A close up, out to a wide for the reveal. For the second shot, we've got the camera on a steady cam traveling in a right to left direction through the class. We want to feel like, like we're right there in the class with these students, a, a bit voyeuristic. Also, we want to, as much as possible, indicate that these are all amateurs, or I don't know, maybe not amateurs, but it's a community yoga class, so nobody here is great at it. Well, well actually, there is one guy coming up shortly who is a bit of a yoga rock star, but we'll get back to him in a minute. For now, these students can be a bit wobbly, a bit unsure of themselves, but they don't need to be great because it's casual. They're all just having fun, right? There's no stress, no pressure here. So now we're drawing an older woman sitting in a chair and banging out this tree pose. I'm assuming she's in a chair because she's older and likely has trouble holding the full pose, but hey, again, who cares? Because she's out of the house and having fun. Again, I'm gonna add a few extras in the background, executing the tree pose. I know it's hard to make that out with my chicken scratches here, but that's what that's supposed to be. Okay, now we cut to our yogurt rock star. I imagine every class has one like this. This guy is essentially going pro, and he is not shy about letting people know. There we go. This, this is a perfect reference for this guy. This isn't the actual guy we're going to shoot. This is just a reference for what I found, but I feel like this is spot on. Next, we're cutting to a woman a bit concerned, but not, not too scared. All right, she's looking camera left. Obviously, something has her attention. And we cut to discover it's her husband she's concerned about. He's not looking too good, a bit, a bit wobbly. It's looking like he might just topple, but then suddenly, nope, nope. He corrects himself, stabilizes, carries on. And cut back to the wife. Now she's got a goofy grin, laughing at her hapless husband. Let's go ahead and add a final wide shot of the husband with a few people in the foreground here. One of those I got from the director was to add a close-up to each of these characters to complement the mediums. So let's go back to the shot of the old lady and let's actually let's widen that out a bit so that this shot will be our medium and then uh, we can add a close-up later. In general, if you're cutting in on the same person or if you're cutting in on the same camera angle, you want there to be at least a 30% difference in size, otherwise it just feels a bit off. Now we'll draw up a close-up of the old woman. I don't know, maybe, maybe more of a medium. Finally, we're going to go back in and add some directional arrows to the shots that need them. Before I shoot this off to the director to be approved, I'm going to go back in and clean up most of these shots a little bit, or at least make them more readable. Some of them are, I don't know, maybe a bit too sketchy. And for this guy here, I think I'll just pull in the reference photo I found, resize it, 
and just trace right over it. It's just gonna be easier in general. And just to make sure that there is no confusion, I'm going to clarify that this woman is sitting. Label this one steady cam move. Here you can see I'm bringing in that tree pose reference floor I found earlier and just tracing right over it for these background characters. Make my life just a little bit easier. Okay, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go back in, rearrange some of these frames so that they're in the proper order. And that should be the size of it. I am now ready to shoot this spot out to the director for his comments. Okay, shortly after sending the boards out to the director, I got this email in response. Just a few notes from agency. We actually should be boarding for 30s and then we're gonna do 15s off of those. Also, they want to make sure the boards have joy moments. Also, close-ups of the clothing. It's confusing what everyone will be outfitted in, but I've attached a link to the wardrobe inventories for quick reference. Leggings, sports bras, etc. Should be a mix in the group. Okay, so with all of that in mind, I'm ready to move on to the detailed art stage. Okay, so with all of the main shots approved, I'm now free to go online and find reference photos. I don't do this before the sketch phase because I don't want the photos that I find to influence the storytelling. As far as the new joy moments and the fact that the 15 is now going to be a 30, I'll drop all those additional new shots after I've nailed down the approved ones.
we've arrived at the new frames. For these joy moments and filler shots, I did go ahead and search online first. The joy moments are simple enough. Essentially, it's just a close-up of some of the characters enjoying the hell out of his class. The additional shots that will be needed to pad this spot up to 30 seconds are largely going to be inserts and interesting stacking shots. I like shooting through some foreground elements and I also find raking shots visually appealing, so there'll be a bit of that. I've now jumped into Photoshop so I can draw up some arrows, rearrange some frames, and add some soft focus effects. And thus ends yet another spectacular episode of Ink and Grow Rich. If you made it this far, good for you, Chuckles. I hope you've learned something along this little journey of ours. And I'd like to thank you for, in some small part, restoring my faith in humanity. And if you didn't make it this far, well, pox on you and all your answers. If you'd like to leave a comment below, I'd certainly love to hear from you. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining or would like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Ink and Grow Rich.